final part three video of installing a beta marine engine with the jig uh, you won't actually see the the engine drop down onto the mountains and that final installation though that that will come in the future videos here ultimately the jig allows us to position exactly where the engine will be and where that aft coupler from the engine is flush with the uh, coupler of the drive shaft that's what the jig is for so I've gotten a lot of messages, a lot of requests, emails, everything about this video. And, and I know it's long overdue. I've, the rest of the, the year looks great to really begin to accelerate a lot of the projects here on, the, on this West Cell 32. So this video will take a look at a couple of uh, the steps that have led us up to this point. And really what you'll see moving forward are the following things. And I'll just kind of keep this video very brief. Um, just to conclude this series of the, the little steps of removing the old bolts, the old engine, the old residue, uh, glassing over the, the former bolt holes, um, and making sure that that's flush, making sure the Make sure the bay is prepped and painted. The aft mounts, the aft part of the mounts could not be far enough. So we had to cut away the upper sides of the pan uh, mounting flange so that we're able to slide those plates outboard to get the proper spacing. So we had to cut away a little bit of the fire, fiberglass. Our grinder, um, four inch grinder with a metal cutting blade worked well for that. Now these pre-cut long aluminum plates now uh, the four engine mounts will set on the plates at the locations of, of our diagram that we have here for the Beta 38. The next step though is once the mounts are located in the correct positions, we're gonna drill 3 8 mounting holes for the long plates um, and we'll drill through the fiberglass engine bed. Now these holes, um, are for these 3 8 holes are for the bolts that will hold down the plates. But here along the side, you'll see that I'm drilling one and a half inch diameter uh, access points to be able to, to feed through uh, the washer and nylon lock nuts that will bolt these long plates down. So I did all that work to sand, paint, sand, paint uh, the pan only to, to drill holes into it but uh, the access is, is very limited. It's no way to reach up underneath it to attach the, the nut and washer to the bolts. Uh, but we'll come back through and, and you'll kind of see where we'll just glass back over the, the old holes. And we do have a little bit of a technique, though this time we have a little bit more ability to tape over the back of it and uh, we don't have to use the, the wire and cardboard like, like we did before. If you remember, we uh, sanded and 
rinsed off the old shaft log and pulled out the old cutlass bearing. See, I know it doesn't look great, but we have the new cutlass bearing, uh, the set screw. Oh, I didn't have it pressed all the way in. So a few things as you're looking at this, um, we have to make sure that the shaft coupling is located per the diagram. The shaft coupling face has to be 23 inches from the inside end of the hole. So this coupling on the jig, which you'll see here soon, allows for this uh, one and a quarter inch space for the flexible coupling, which will go between the two during the final installation. So let's take our measurements and let's uh, get the jig onto the plates. Look at that. Twenty three inches. Explain what kind of what you're looking at here at the moment. We have the jig not quite high enough for the drive shaft coupler. And so we're going to insert spacers below the, the forward uh, mounts of the jig. And that will kind of level off the two couplers and we'll join them. We could bolt them together, but um, you know we're just not going to show every single step. But I wanted... Uh, many of the people that have emailed about how to use the jig, um, I just wanted a very short to the point. Uh, so if you're at this part of the process, let me kind of walk through what you are looking at. So we've done a few steps already. We have this shaft log um, loosely in place. You can go ahead and, and bolt that to make sure it doesn't move. That will be the last thing installed. We have the drive shaft with the drive shaft coupler. That is precisely 23 inches from the aft part of the west cell of the engine bay here. Now, we have gone ahead and made sure that the propeller can be installed. Though, when we come back to this point, the engine will be installed and we'll be kind of uh, sliding the drive shaft through the shaft seal. That's very important. We don't forget to install the shaft seal. We won't install it over the log until we uh, permanently install the shaft log. So we need to bed that and epoxy it and get that bolted to the boat. The next thing you're looking at as far as the jig is we've confirmed that it's 16 and a quarter inches apart. That's where the engine mounts need to be and 17 and a quarter longitudinally. So we'll make our marks. We'll know where the mounts need to go. We're done with the jig. All right, so we needed a lot more spacer plates. We have six. We can join our couplers and Kind of keep these blocks in place and we'll talk about how to secure these spacer blocks in another video.